Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. A couple days ago, I got an email asking about just different ways to reference game objects in your project. So the sample that was sent to me and that I'm going to use here is just about adding score. I've started off with a very, very basic version of this. So we've got a scene set up with a bad guy. Let me switch out of debug mode real quick. And it's got a simple script on here, a click to kill script. And essentially when I click, it's going to add some score. I've also got a reference to a score manager that's right here. And the score manager is very simple again, just has a single script. So let me show you the code real quick, show you how this works. And then I wanna go through four other options for how you can set this up that are each a little bit cleaner than the previous. So the first one here, again, we just have a reference to a score manager. It's private with the serialized field attribute, so it shows up in the inspector. And then when in the update, we just check to see if they fire, click left click or anything that counts as fire one. And then we call score manager dot add score. We've already got a reference to the score here. And you know, it just goes in and it adds one to the score value. And this works. The problem that you could run into though, and the problem in the question was just that, you know, what if I have a hundred bad guys and they're all here? Do I have to go through and set them up for each one? What if the score manager is gonna persist across levels and I wanna have you know, a score that continues along? All of these things kinda of make this system fall apart, at least in the way that it's set up right now. So here, let me just delete these real quick, hit play, show it working, and then let's dive into the next method that we could use here. So here's the score manager. I'm gonna to switch to debug mode. That's this little drop down here, second option. And then we'll watch the score as I click, it goes up. Pretty simple. Now let's go into the second option here, find object of type. So instead of referencing the object directly and having a reference in our bad guy, let's switch back out of debug, uh, we just have a click to kill that has zero fields that are visible. And instead in the update, again, we call add score, but our add score is a little bit different. Instead we find object of type and we give it the type score manager. What this is gonna do is find the first thing in our scene that is a score manager. Now, if we have multiple score managers, that could be a problem, but we, when we code it this way, we're kind of expecting that there's only ever gonna be one. So again, this system works. We can click, it'll find the object, and if I select my score manager again, switch back to debug mode, and start clicking, you'll see the score goes up. Again, not the best way to do this. There are quite a few others. In fact, there are three others that I'm just about to show you, but this does work. And sometimes I use this when I'm prototyping quickly, I just need to find something, or if it's just something that's gonna need to be called once in an initialization, I know the object's there and I just wanna find it, I can use that. Now let's look at the next option, a singleton. So I'm gonna open this scene up. Again, it looks exactly the same, and we'll switch out of debug mode again. And if we look at the bad guy, you see he's got no fields on him, and the score manager looks exactly the same too. No visual difference here, but let's take a look at the code. So if we go into our click to kill now, you see that we're calling score manager to dot instance dot add score. By the way, these are just named slightly different so that each class would kind of work in the project and I could have different demo versions. So score manager two uses a singleton pattern. And if we go into the score manager, you see that the first thing I've got here is a public static score manager two, which matches the class, named instance with a public getter and a private setter. This is so that it can only be set inside the score manager two class. It can't be changed outside of here. Then in awake, we just check to see if the instance is null. If it is null, which means that this awake has never been called, the instance has never been set, then we set the instance to the game object that, or the score manager that is running this awake right now. And now if it's already been set, so another score manager or another object with the same script on it already ran and set instance, then we just destroy the existing one. Ideally, we don't want this to ever happen. This just means that there's something wrong with our program flow and we're reloading a scene with a score manager in it or something. We should try to avoid that, but this will just kind of clean up if we make a mistake. And then add score, of course, is exactly the same. So if we take a look at this and just play, you'll see it, it works exactly the same. Go back into here, switch to debug, click, and my score manager is now incrementing the score. Okay, let's move on to the next method, using a scriptable object. This one's a bit different. I'm gonna open the scene up, and you may notice that we don't have a score manager in here anymore. We just have a bad guy, 
It's got a click to kill script. Here, let's go out of debug mode again. And you'll see that it references a score manager. But if I click on it, it's referencing a score manager in the project view. So how is this working? Well, let's take a look. In our click to kill script, it's really pretty much the same. There's no noticeable difference between this and the first method, right? We're just assigning a score manager on the object and calling add score. But let's take a look at the score manager. How is it down there in the project view? Well, the difference here is that we're using a scriptable object instead of a mono behavior. So we can create this in the project view. It lives outside the scene, but it's still accessible by all of our scripts. So they can share this across different scenes and have everything just work. There is one little difference here. In on enable, I'm resetting the score back to zero. The reason for that is, remember, this isn't in the scene, so our changes are actually changing something in that project, and we wanna reset that when the player comes back in and starts the next game. We don't wanna keep their previous score just sitting there because they went into the next level or whatever. So we need to reset that. The other thing that's important to note here is that we have to have the create asset menu attribute up here. That's so that we can right click down here, hit create and choose score manager and just create a score manager. That's all I did for this other one that's referenced. So actually here, let's just delete this old one and we'll rename, we'll just, we'll keep new score manager three. And then I can just assign that to my bad guy. Save my scene and press play. And then let's just look at the score manager in debug mode. And again, the nicest thing about this is that we can reference these from anywhere in our project. They don't have to be in the same scene. We don't have to worry about keeping scenes around or keeping objects around. So here we go, I've got the score manager. I'm in debug mode and I click and you see it just goes up. Now if I stop, notice that the value is still nine. Right? If I click off, click back on, it's nine. That's why the on enable is just resetting us back down to zero. And you may not want to do it in on enable, there may be a different place for it, but you do want to make sure that you remember the values are persistent there. Okay, the last option, and this one can really be mixed with some of the others. So this could be mixed in with the scriptable object one or something else but let's just dive into it and take a look. And that's injection. Now we're not gonna go into a full dependency injection framework. That's a big, big subject and it would take a lot more than this video. It'd be a focus of a complete separate one. But we can do injection without a DI framework. I mean, dependency injection is simply the process of taking dependencies and passing them into objects as they're created or right after they're created. Now, with a framework, it'll kind of automatically do that. At least that's that's the goal of the frameworks. In our case, we'll just do it manually. So let's take a look. I'm gonna switch back to normal mode. And the first thing I want you to look at is notice that there's no bad guy. Now we just have a spawner. So in most games, this is probably gonna be the case where you have a spawner that actually instantiates your enemies or whatever these things are. And then those things need to do something to a score. So, Let's take a look at how this is working and why it's working. Now, if we go into the spawner, let's get rid of those using statements. You see that we have a reference to a bad guy prefab, and then we have a reference to a score manager. Then we have some spawning logic here. So we just have a, a timestamp where we're keeping the next spawn time, a respawn rate, and then right now it's at every 15 seconds, we're spawning a guy in this spawn method. Now the spawn method just does a normal instantiate, but then it initializes. So on this click to kill four script, so the one that's on this bad guy that we're instantiating, there's an initialize method that allows us to just inject in a score manager. Then the score manager just gets cached right here and our add score method calls that. Now this is um, ideally one of my preferred methods to do this kind of thing. I like to pass in dependencies and just inject them in. I don't generally use dependency injection frameworks in Unity, but outside of Unity, I use them for just about everything. So this feels clean, it feels comfortable. I know that when the object is there, when it's ready, all of its dependencies are already done, it's already met. I don't have to worry about finding things and uh, you know searching in the scene or anything else. Now, it's also, again, worth noting that this reference here to the score manager, it's referencing one in the scene no reason it couldn't also just reference a scriptable object and pass that in. So that way only our spawner needs to know about it. And again, we could even go up one more level and have something else passing this into the spawners. So that way, if we have multiple spawners, we don't have to have this assigned on every one, we just do it in one spot. 
So let's try this out real quick, just show that it works, and then wrap things up. So there we go, we'll go into debug mode. We should get one guy spawning. And I click, and the score goes up. Now in a couple seconds, a second guy will spawn. Here, let's move this one over. Oops, wrong thing, move the score manager. Let's move that guy over. In a little bit, we'll see another guy spawn, and then when we click, we'll get two points every time. There we go. So now you see it's going up by two, because both of these guys have the same score manager getting injected into them. So this is just a couple of the different ways that you can do this. There are other alternative methods for referencing game objects in your Unity projects. But like I said, I prefer going kind of bottom to top here. I like the fourth one the best, just injecting things. I like the scriptable object system a lot. And then uh, singletons next best, and then find object to type kind of at the, the last, last call. Now, to be honest and fair, singletons are probably the thing that I see used the most. I use them, I'd say probably more than the other options, just because they're simple, they're fast, and they work. And everybody understands them. When you go with that system, pretty much every Unity developer is going to run across them at some time and kind of know what's going on. With the other methods, it takes a little bit of extra brain power to figure out what it is and kind of understand the, the flow of things. Although I do prefer them in just a bigger project that's got you know a lot more going on where I don't want to fill it up with singletons. Anyway, I hope this is somewhat helpful for you. If you have questions uh, or comments or other suggestions, especially if you have some other suggestions on good ways to do this, please just drop them in a comment below. Other than that, um, don't forget the like, thumbs up stuff, subscribe, share with your friends. And again, thanks for watching.